Hello, everyone. Welcome to this Talks at Google virtual event. My name is Steven Ichata, and I'm a global lead responsible for ensuring users all over the world can connect to Google. I also work actively at Google and with the community to initiate and execute diversity, equity, and inclusion, grassroots, and programmatic efforts targeted at creating environments where all Googlers and the community as a whole can feel a sense of belonging. But for today, my role is to moderate a truly unique conversation with a very special person. Before we get started, though, I want to remind the audience that we will be taking questions towards the end of this talk. As you think of questions throughout this conversation, please be sure to add them on the live chat on the right. And to get us started, I'm very excited to introduce today's guest, Noela Kusaris Musunka. But before I do that, let's watch a really short video. Malaika was a dream that was born out of my own experiences as a child. Back in 2007, Kalibuka was an underserved, underdeveloped community deeply impacted and isolated from a better future and from the rest of the world due to lack of infrastructure. I met girls, boys and women with so much potential, drive and passion, but with no opportunity to achieve their dreams. I saw the future leaders inside of these individuals and I knew I had to overcome challenges from cultural to logistical to financially in order to provide them with free high quality education and health initiatives. From the beginning of Malaika, we realized we had to go beyond a formal education. We teach our girls to be leaders, building their confidence through sport, through peer education, and through challenging them on so many platforms. Today, over 50 million girls in Sub-Saharan Africa are out of school. I want to change that narrative, one student and community at a time. We must close this gender gap, starting by building the foundations for a strong, equal education system. Our holistic community-led approach has enabled us to grow into a full-fledged ecosystem where all of our programs serve multiple interwoven purposes. Our community center provides thousands of adults and youth with not only numeracy and literacy skills, but also vocational education, such as agriculture through our sustainable farm and also sewing. A small Malaika family has grown into an active global community full of friends and supporters from across the world. Please join us in celebrating a 15-year anniversary by supporting us in whatever way you can. Thank you to every single one of our supporters. Without you, Malaika will not be the thriving ecosystem and opportunity filled part of the community it is today. What a powerful video. Oh my goodness. Um, before I bring Noella, let me tell you a little bit about Noella and a little bit about Malaika. Noella Kusaris Musunka is the founder and CEO of Malaika. It's a grassroots nonprofit that empowers girls and communities in the Democratic Republic of the Congo through a school, a community center, and a clean water program. As you saw from the video, we're 15 years strong. Founded in 2007, Malaika has grown into a fully functioning ecosystem impacting thousands of lives each and every year. Anchored by an accredited primary and secondary school for 400, soon to be 430 girls. The Malaika School provides a comprehensive education for girls aged five to 18, with a STEM-focused curriculum, including coding, music, theater, sport, and art. But let me tell you about Noella. Noella is unique. She's fearless. She's a spokesperson and the face of leading fashion campaign across the globe. Noella is a voice for the power of girls' education worldwide. She has shared her insight at a number of world-class forums. So many, too many to name, but includes the World Economic Forum in Davos to the University Halls of Cambridge, Oxford, Harvard, and MIT. And in fact, in 2017, Noella was named one of the BBC's 100 Most Influential and Inspirational Women of the Year. And in 2018, she received an award at the 100 Years of Mandela Celebration. 
organization Malaika, as you can see, does brilliant work. And if you'd like to donate towards their work, there's a donate button where you can do that. 100% of all donations go to Malaika. Noella, it is my extreme pleasure. I am so humbled to welcome you to the talks at Google. Thank you so much, Stefan, um, for this amazing introduction. I think you're going to come to start to volunteer at Malaika. Thank yes. you, everyone, for joining us uh, today. It's a real pleasure to be here. Actually, I'm calling you. It's so funny. I live in England, but I'm calling you today from uh, Zurich, from my hotel. And five minutes away, it is the Google um, office. But I'm calling you here virtually, so it's insane. But uh, it's a, I think we're going to start with the, po the presentation, and then we can go from question and answer. So Malaika really starts from, from a piece of paper, a dream that I have in my heart. I lost my dad when I was five years old. My, um, I was the only child. My mother didn't have any resources to keep me. So she decided to give me a way to have a chance to be educated. So I grew up mainly in Europe. I didn't see my mom for 13 years. So when I went to see her back, I was 18. And it was the most crucial point in my life to see her um, see living in underprivileged condition, very extremely poorly, to see so many potential of children not attending school, the potential of the country, but not enough investing in education. And I always promise myself, if one day I have a chance, I will not only look after my mother, but I want to give back to, to my country, to my continent. So from a piece of paper now, we have 15 years this year celebrating Malaika and all the work through these 15 years we had a lot of challenges so many times I wanted to give up but when you see the smile the the drive of these children of this community coming to study every day at Malaika that's what keeps you going and want to do even more for them I lead Malaika as a volunteer I don't take any salary of Malaika I donate my time, nearly four to six hours a day, with a lot of passion, a lot of commitment, with a huge, amazing team of people that we're paying and a lot of volunteers. So we can go to the next slide. Malaika mission is to empower girls and the community for education, health programs, sports, and technical um, skills. Next slide. We're working in the Congo, in the southern east of the Congo. We really start only with, um, with one building, free classroom, the toilet facilities and uh, the offices facilities. We're working in a village where there's no access to water, electricity, infrastructure. When we arrive, it was a completely bush and we completely transformed over the 15 years the entire uh, village pushing the government, I have knocked at least 100 times on the government uh, doors to beg them to make the roads to go to Kalibuka. That's where we work in Kalibuka. And they made 70% of the, the road. And it really brings a social economic development in, uh, in, uh, in the area. But something that really struck me is when to make the bricks, to have the toilet facility, you need to have water. And as it was no water, we have to build a well. And when we built the well, hundred people were coming. Hundred of people were coming every day to fetch water from a well. And I was asking them, "Where are you going to fetch water?" And they were going in the river. The water was so dirty. Or they were walking one hour, two hours. And I was in my mind, "My God, I just wanted to build a school, and I think we have to go beyond that." And we built over the years twenty-five wells. We then impacting more than 35,000 people a year. We are uh, doing uh, manual wells and we are building um, uh, solar panel wells too. And if we go next slide, and every year we were adding more classroom. So all the students arrive at five years old to Malaika is a leadership school for girls. And it, the, the girls stay until 18 years old. Next year is a big uh, step for us. It will be the first cohort of Malaika, of students leaving Malaika. And when I was there in November, because I go twice a year and I stay generally two months a year, when I was there last uh, November, uh, a lot of girls came to me and they all called me Mama Noela. And I know all of them since five years old. And they were scared to leave next year Malaika because that's what they know. 
We know the education is 7 million of children don't attend school in the Congo. More than 260 million children, teenagers in the world are out of school. 40.5 million of girls um, don't attend school in the sub-Saharan Africa. So this statistic is still high and all of us can make a change and we're investing in education. Next slide. The Malaika ecosystem, it's really investing in education, in preparing them in tech, in the 21st century skills. We build the school from scratch. We build a community center where we have 5,000 people, youth, adult, boys coming to study there. We build technical classes. I will go more into details in the next slides. We have wells, the school, to agriculture. Our curriculum is very efficient. For five years in a row, our girls passed the national test and the Minister of Education came to see what was the success of Malaika. And the success of Malaika is all the holistic program that we have from coding, from music, from robotic, from uh, HTML, uh, the learning, uh, um, and we give them a very strong nutrition program. When um, we talk a lot with the students, we discover that they were very malnourished and eating maybe, <coughs> and eating maybe twice a week. So we decided to really emphasize the nutrition program and give them everyday breakfast and lunch. So we're feeding 450 people a day, including our students and our staff. Next slide. Is really creating the next leaders of the continent, give them values to grow with and give them the tools to dream big. We have Lorian want to be an IT engineer. We have Kaloto want to be a journalist. We have Rapata that want to become, um, to become a nurse. And we have Marceline that want to be a, a, a biochemist. And they all have dreams, dreams that they never think about it when they start at five years old at our school. Next slide. Our school, our environment is very important. We plant trees. All our program has solar pro, um, panel provided. We look after environment. We talk about it with our students and with our staff. Next slide. Marceline. Marceline is so special for me. She started at five years old. She was coming every day when the school was starting to be built. I was really there when the school started to be built. And she was saying, can I come to this school? Can I come to this school? Is, is it going to be free because my family don't have money? And I say, Marceline, you will be one of the first students. And we see her growing into an amazing girl. Uh, she does sports. She's extremely good in tennis. She's very kind. She's giving back to a community, always helping the other student. It's so nice to see them growing with so much confidence. Next slide. And there you're seeing the meals program that is so important, the breakfast, the lunch, and even in the holiday, you know, when they were coming back from holiday the first year, they were coming back so skinny and not well, unhealthy. And we decided then to do uh, on holiday one uh, some extracurriculum activities. This way they can have one meal at the school. Next slide. And this is really a STEM leaders. They learn from uh, VPL, Blocky, Scratch, Shop, Scratch, uh, Swift, Google Chrome, and etc. They're more uh, tech than me. <laughs> and from robotic, in the crisis of the COVID, we put some 3D printer. They did mask shield. We distributed to them to over um, uh, 60 hospitals. The, the student made 2,000 mask shield. Next slide. This is Emran. She want to be. She's born to be working in uh, as an IT engineer. Next slide. We lost one of the students. She was six years old, the same age as my son at this time. And um, when the family called us, it was between Christmas and New Year. It was already too late, and we decided to really emphasize on the health checkup. So all of the students, we created an infirmary in the memory of Miriam. And we have a nurse working there and really checking the health of a student. Next slide. The community investment is really important. You cannot build a school without the interaction of investing in the parents and the community and the youth. When FIFA did the, the World Cup in 2010, they decided to build 20 community centers. So we built partially with them the football pitch and one building. But the demand was so high 
of the community wanted to learn. We have a very low rate of literacy in the village. So our, course, uh, um, our courses that we're offering at the center is literacy, digital classes, entrepreneurship, sewing classes. So we build a few buildings with private donors. And it's really amazing to see some mothers. We have Mama Annie that never knew how to read and write. And now she can read, write, she can use a computer. She'd go to the sewing classes. Now she has her own sewing. A machine at home and she has a little business we have some uh, women now that they can go to work as a cashier in town so we really give them some tools where they can be empowered next slide and this is all the mothers the youth coming and learning and about farming too because we grow our own food and we teach about organic farming next slide this is all the boys. People always ask us, do you do boys? Yes, we do a lot of boys. A lot of boys come to our community center. A lot of boys that we see some potential on them. We pay a local school and where they go to study there. Next slide. This is all the boys that we're sponsoring and more than, we have more than 25 boys that we're sponsoring at different schools, but we have a lot of them studying at the community center. Jonathan, for instance, the, the first boy, he was coming to study every day at our center. And I was like, who's this little boy? He study, he's helping us. And I said, Jonathan, show me where do you live? And he works one hour every day to come to our center and one hour to go back. And if you see the area where he live, so poor, no water. And we decided to create, um, to build a solar panel well in the area where he was living. And it's really a changing life for the, the community. Russell and Strong, we pay the school, Strong is at university studying sport. Most of the pictures you're seeing in this presentation are being done by uh, Russell and Strong. <coughs> I have a bad cold, I suffer badly of hay fever. <laughs> Next slide. And this is a program we launched uh, two months ago with Caterpillar Foundation. It's about mechanic and electricity. Youth from 17 years old to 35 years old and 40% of women enrolled. And then we can put them on the market as a, to find a job. It's really, really exciting to see this program. We work on this program for nearly three years. I went to speak to a conference uh, with the president of Caterpillar, and then um, they came to Congo to visit Malaika, and we design and work on this project, and we hope it can be duplicated in other, uh, other communities in, um, in Africa. Next slide. And this is all the wells that we build. Manual well is with a pump and solar panel well is more taps. So more people can use it and there's less maintenance to build a manual uh, a solar panel, but it costs more money. Next slide. This is all our farming. We grow our own food and it go back to the canteen of the school and we teach them about organic farming. Next slide. And this is all the COVID-19 response. The price were soaring very high. So we distributed over 10,000 to over 10,000 people the food. The sewing mask, we make more than 3,000. The mothers, they were so happy that to be able to save lives. We make face shield production. We created each and resources in a lot of parts in different villages. Next slide. And this is our team. We invest for me when the COVID-19 hit us and all our donations were going down. The first thing I really wanted is to be able to keep our staff because our staff we invested so much development into them, leadership, technical, <coughs> digital um, competences. So it was very important and I'm happy we were able to keep all our staff. Next slide. I've been invited to speak to a lot of conference, but my favorite is to speak actually at schools. I speak to a lot of schools, Harvard, MIT, or schools that are completely unknown. I do workshop with some students. We have conversation. And it's really interesting because to be a mother right now in the society we're living, it's very tough. I have two kids myself and my two children come every summer with me in the Congo for six, seven weeks. But I see a lot of bullying in school and in, in, in Europe, in England. And it's um, you, you really have to spend a lot of time with children at school and really understand the issues. I see girls at Malaika school, they don't have phone, they don't have social media, they don't have electricity at their home, the way they're listening to news. 
is through radio or if someone in the village has a little bit of electricity and watch TV. And I try to make some time relationship with some student and the student and Malaika that they can exchange and learn from each other. Next slide. 15 years, we were very lucky. We won some awards, the Wally Teresi Award, the 100 Years Mandela Award. Two weeks ago, we won the Mohamed Ali Award. It's for me, all these awards are dedicated to the team and to the people we're serving. But it's important to have recognition of the work we're doing, the data, the monitoring evaluation that we're doing, because it's, it takes a lot of work and it's, it's so much challenges every day, but you have to overcome and you have to be very fast thinking. You have to come with um, solutions and you have to adapt yourself in every situation. Like for instance, the crisis in Ukraine, again, all our donation coming down, how you're going to fundraise, how you're going to keep up with your staff, all the programs that you have, all the accessories that you see in these in this, in this, uh, pictures is all the matters. They make all the accessories. We teach them and we call this brand called Mama Yama Pendo. Next slide. And our free year vision, we're creating right now a student fund to make sure that our student will leave Malaika. We will be following them and helping them to apply for university or technical classes or wherever they want to go. We creating, we launching this year the the blueprint and the guide of Malaika, whole organization, corporate, can duplicate the entire ecosystem of Malaika or some part. The school, the community center, the, the technical classes, the agriculture, the water sanitation, and etc. So that's something that I want to share because people think it's easy to run a foundation. It's not easy. People think to build a school, it's easy. No, you need the legal paper, you need the land, you need the construction sites, you need uh, to have the improvement. Uh, the approval of the community, uh, you need to fundraise, uh, you need to work with the environment. So there's so many steps that people don't realize. And I'm very excited to launch that and to share. Next slide. And this is where we are. Um, thank you very much. And uh, I'm, I'm open for any conversation and have any questions that you, that you have. Thank you so much, Noella. Oh my goodness, that was um, that was very touching, very sentimental. I myself grew up in Nairobi, Kenya, so a lot of the things you talked about, I, I could relate to. I could relate to seeing uh, the kids in the rural areas not having access to education and water, and so this really resonated with me, and I think it resonates a lot with Africans at Google who are watching this. Um, and I'm really sorry to hear about Miriam. That story was very touching and how it helped give you a sense of purpose. And, and so I want to ask you about purpose. It's evident that you found your purpose. You know, some people may call it passion, but I think passion is about energy. It doesn't really lend itself to like a vocation, a mission. <laughs> and that's what I see that you have with Malaika. So perhaps tell us, where did this purpose come from? Is it from observing things? Is it something you've always done? Is it an incident in your life? Or is it all of them? <laughs> it's, you know, first of all, like I was telling you my own story of the loss of my dad, that was a real eye opener. And um, for me, I'm a, sometimes people, when they present me, I'm an influencer. No, I'm not an influencer. I'm a, someone that built. I'm someone that make action happen that if I see a problem, I will make sure that if I cannot find the solution, I will work with people that will help me to find the solution. And it, I like to build, I like to build a team. I like to build a pro, all the programs that we have with the amazing team. I like to always improve. And I'm very open to criticism from the team, criticism from donors, criticism from the community. And I really want to work, uh, I believe in the team building and the team operations. When I go to Malaika, every day, I start the day with a mini management meeting because it's very important we are on the same page how we manage Malaika and we learn from every day what we're doing well and what we're not doing well. And this way we plan well all the week. And yet, yeah, certainly my purpose is to give back to, to my continent. We, Africa, the next 10 years will be very exciting. It's going to be a young generation that's going to drive Africa, that's going to, that's creating business, that has entrepreneurship, that's breaking the barriers of colonization, 
that want a new narrative for Africa. And uh, we have to be part of this chapter. And it's, it's, it's only investing, not in education, it's investing in high quality education. But you have to be, you have to, to work with the reality. We're talking about technology. But if you go to Kalibuka, all of that, there's no electricity, there's no access to internet. So you have to go step by steps and build the infrastructure. And uh, yeah, I'm observing. I'm someone that loves to read, that like to learn. I, for me, Mandela is really one of my heroes and see the resilience, the, the wisdom that he has and, and how he overcome challenge. It's really something special that came over in every day to, 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 my, to my purpose and to work with amazing people. I will not be able to do everything that I do. You know, I land on Sunday in, in Switzerland. I had to speak in Geneva in, in a talk in Davos. I'm here in Zurich in my hotel. Uh, <laughs> I have meetings between. I'm talking with the Malaika team on the ground. I'm organized already um, my trip in the Congo where 20 people coming. There's a lot of planning and you're only able to do all of that if you have a very strong team around you and if you delegate. Thank you. Like I can, I can hear the purpose resonating. I can hear the teamwork, just the bias to action and looking for ways to make things better. Um, so I have an 11 year old and a seven year old, so similar to you, but the 11 year old is a girl, seven year old is a boy for me. How do you give them that same sense of purpose? You talked about the basic needs that are not there in Congo, but then arguably maybe your, your children don't have to struggle with that same basic need, how do you connect those two so that they, they feel what your purpose is and can, can use the same purpose in their life? So, you know, my children, I, I discovered, I left Congo at five and came back at 18. So I discovered my continent and my country very late in my life. So I wanted my children to know where I was from, where my family was from. My son is 11 years old. He's been 24 times in the Congo. My daughter is eight. She's been more than 14, 15 times. And every summer, they come with me in the village and they go in the village and they learn. And they have different language. At home in England, they will tell me, Mommy, can I buy credit for my Fortnite, for my FIFA? Mommy, can I go on Amazon to buy my, my Barbie? And, but when they go to Congo and they go in the village, they say, Mom, can I go buy my stress for my friends? They sleep on the floor. Mm. Can I buy buckets? I see they don't have water, but they wash themselves with bucket. Can we buy food? I see they don't have shoes. And it's only when they are on the ground that you can, of course, they realize all of that. But when they're on the ground and they're coming every day, they come, it's coming really from them. I don't have to push them. I don't want to impose them anything. And they do their own suitcase where they bring their clothes, they bring their toys, and they're bringing, and they decided to do a well. So my daughter called it well on the name and my son. And it's good to see them growing with the, the Africa roots. My husband is British, so my kids are quite light-skinned. But it's funny because when they go in the village, they have to adapt themselves. And kids don't see any colors between them. They play, they learn. And it's really beautiful. I think we make the world more complicated as adults, but kids at this age are more simple. They play, they have a ball and they play. I love that. We, we as adults make it more complicated than it could actually, than it, than it should <laughs> actually be, right? Um, so first generation immigrants like myself and our very own Africans at Google, we always have this struggle. And the struggle comes from <coughs> where we're in the US or you know in Europe or uh, in the diaspora in another country, and we're being pulled by our extended family to help. We're being pulled by all these other charity organizations to help. You know, there's all these people who are relying on us because we're in the quote unquote land of milk and honey where everything is possible. How do you put your focus on, on Malaika? And I can imagine you get pulled in so many different directions by so many people. Tell us about you know, that was, intentionality. You know, I was in a meeting one day and they were saying African don't really donate to charities. And actually we donate a lot because when one, Afri one of us is successful, you have to help the mother, the grandmother, pay the study of your brothers, your sisters. So through Western Union, MoneyGram, all of them, we're sending money back home. And we yeah. are there when there's a funeral, when there's someone in the hospital, we're always there. But when I go to Congo, 
I have really to close my eyes and I have the team protecting me. I have to keep focus because, you know, there's so many problems, so many issues. Uh, handicaps, uh, no water there, or, or this family is sick, or they lost their home, and you cannot help the world. So over the years, I learned to say no. Okay. And, and, and I have to close my heart and my eyes because it hurt me to say no. But if I start keeping helping everyone, my life will collapse and I will collapse too. So mentally, I need to be extremely strong and focused. I spend a lot of time working in different villages to see and talk with people. And I want to understand the problem and I want to help the most I can. But I think over the 15 years that I go to a lot of villages, People know me and they know how much I've been invested personally and with Malaika and and themselves they try to protect me too. Because I bring a I bring a lot in terms of visibility to the Congo, to the villages and the way we're doing. But I have my limitation and it's very important to put your own barrier and, and say no. And personally, you know, my first salary that I have, I've been helping my mums. She got children. I've been paying the school of my my half brother sisters, but there's so much you you cannot do it. And I have my own kids where I have to look after them. So um, I will say really to everyone that you have to understand your own limitation, and it's very important to say no. And when you want to help, it's important to really keep focus on what you decide to help and make it happen instead of doing so many things and then it doesn't work. And is the reason I think Malaika is celebrating the 15 years is because we've been on the track and we're not going to create more programs. We're going to strengthen everything that we have. That's, that's such great advice. I, I know I speak for a lot of Africans at Google here. Um, you know, we have Africans from all over the continent, from Kenya, South Africa, Uganda, Nigeria. And I think all of us go through very similar experience where we get pulled in so many places. So that advice is, is really good. Um, what I really love about Malaika is that you recognize all the needs. You talked about the physiological needs like food and water. And then you talked about the self-fulfillment <laughs> needs like, like education. You have 25 wells feeding 400 people, 450 people a day. Tell me about that mindset that you have to say that all of this is possible, you know, not just water and stop at water, not just agriculture and stop at agriculture, but be able to do all those pieces. How, how do you build that mental model to be able to accommodate all of that? We have great supporters, great donors, um, people that run marathon, that do a yoga class, people on the, gr on the ground donating with goods, donating the time, we have uh, a lot of donors that came and volunteers that came to Malaika and they're becoming informally ambassador because they talk mm. to the corporate, to their friends, to the community. They try to raise money for their birthdays and etc. So it's becoming a ripple effect. And for the two years and a half that we didn't have anybody going to Malaika, it really hit us badly. But uh, it's to have all the ecosystem of Malaika that is so important because the school is linked with the community center. Because you know, more than 11 million girls didn't go back to school after the COVID-19. At Malaika, we got 98% of the girls came back and the 2% is because they, some girls moved out of Kalebuka. And why we were successful to have 98% coming back is because with the community center, we did a lot of work, a lot of talks. I meet a lot of me. I meet constantly the parents and the team on the ground have constantly meeting with the parents because we ask the parents to go to educate themselves at the community center. And we talk about sexual reproduction. We talk about family planning. We talk and we do a lot of activities for sports about equality, women's rights. We distributed over 14,000 Malaria Net. We talk, uh, we make the community center to a fun place to come, to play, to dance, to to, to, to kick a ball, to run, to do athletism. We have mothers that never kick a ball or did sports and they're coming. And it's a place where they speak to each other. <clears throat> and that's very important. And that's what Malaika make. And when, and when we see that it's a place where there's really a need of water, 
I, we try always to try to build a well. We try to do one or two wells. But you cannot have the school educating the kids without educating the parents or the youth or the sibling. The mortality rate in Congo is nearly 48 years old. 48 years old? It's insane. And full education, full water, and full programs like we distributed mosquito nets, we, we've been saving lives and impacting lives. <clears throat> 48 years that's that's so hard to hear and it's and it's good to hear that you have a 98 percent return you said something earlier that really struck me is people come to the school to the community center and they feel empowered and and they feel like they have a future then they go home for holiday and when they come back they're skinny how do you how do you reconcile with that what is exactly the question i didn't understand well the last part so when they go to holiday, when they're away from the school, when they're away from the community center oh, yeah. and they're on, ho on holiday, then it, it's almost like now they're on their own. How, how do you manage but the, that? But you know, the kids, uh, they don't really like to go on a holiday. So they yeah. come nearly every day at the school because first of all, they know we will have one meal for them. <coughs> and, uh, and they come to learn different activities. We have a lot of volunteers going to Malaika, so we created uh, different programs and they come to learn. And it's really good because we noticed when it was the COVID-19 and we have to close for four months, a lot of girls were, we were very scared that some girls will get pregnant, will be forced to be married, or girls, you know, they've been um, doing, uh, helping the families, helping the families in agricultural field, fetching the water, cleaning their home and etc. But we were so, so proud. And this is the work that the team has been doing with the parents. Uh, Malaika is it's in their heart, you know. And that's why the reason I, I, before you know, the name of Malaika was George Malaika Foundation. And George, it was the name of my dad. He was in his memory. Mm -hmm. And I decided to cut the name of my dad, but my dad is always in his name in my heart, because I wanted, if you ask a student what Malaika means for you, she will say, because I'm going to the school. If you ask a mother what Malaika means for you, it's because I'm going to the community center to learn. But if you ask a staff why you involved in Malaika, they will tell you it's because the technical classes, it's because it's changing my country, because it's changing the narrative of education. And I wanted people to feel related and, and not feel related to me. A lot of people sometimes call their foundation the name, and I understand because they will drag more donation. But for me, I want bit by bit my image to fade and the legacy okay. to be for the next 20, 30 years. And we're working on the succession plan, if anything happened to me, that Malaika will be keep continuing and will be take over by some people of the community and not some of the students. I'm, I'm sure that one of the students will take over Malaika one day and we'll run it. I really love that you're thinking about sustaining it and scaling it. And, and you know, your first cohort is leaving Malaika. How does that make you feel like you've watched, you've watched it from almost from seed to growth? Like, how does that fill your heart? But I saw it from the first break to the second break to the one toilet to 10 toilets. Uh, I saw the girls coming at five. We give them the uniform, the underwear, the shoes. I see them growing into shy girls, manurish, into powerful girls, where uh, sometimes they eat, they won tournament of tennis and they earn some money and they give back some of the money going back to Malaika school or Malaika program and they're helping some of the projects in the community that they help. And I saw them uh, with a voice, I have conversation with them. And some of the uh, volunteers and donors, when they go there, they say, wow, we have conversation with them. They ask us questions. And, and they have their own personality. And I want to do, I hope, I pray they do well. I pray they will give back to the country. And um, that's going to be uh, a very exciting, um, exciting new journey for them and for Malaika to see them growing. I'm excited, but I'm, I'm super nervous too, because they, they, they like my children, you know? And yeah, it's, it's very special. You know, uh, talking about Malaika, it's not lost on me that Malaika is a Swahili word meaning angel. Again, I grew up in Nairobi, Kenya, and that was, you know, I remember Miriam Makeba's Malaika, you know, Nakupenda Malaika. So that really resonates as I think about the name. Um, 
I'm curious as you you do but like I mean angel entire... for the people that don't know it means angel in Swahili. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, for the for the audience, uh, Malaika is angel in Swahili. Um, I love that you want to duplicate your entire ecosystem and create sort of a, a blueprint for others. Do you think it will also use the word, name Malaika, or are you saying you're going to build a blueprint that other people can use and give it different names? What What are you thinking about? Uh, the blueprint will be given, so um, people can download the blueprint or we will do masterclass video that they can download the videos or they, we can do a site visit for like three days and then we can explain them. I think the site visit is the most powerful. So we can organize two site visits and they can really learn how the journey started from, from the staff on the ground and even talking with the parents and etc. But it would be only one Malaika. Uh, I think we're successful because we are focused in one area and we grow there. Uh, we're not going to rebuild that anywhere else and we will protect the name Malaika. We are constantly uh, receiving emails from people, we want to build a foundation, we want to build a school, we want to do this. So I say, you know what, let's put that, let's put that, all of that in one, in, in the toolkit and where yeah. we're able to, to share. Fantastic. Thank you. So there's a lot of people watching right now, thousands of Africans watching right now, and thousands Thousand, of allies. Not millions, I, we're, we're, we're on YouTube. Okay, billions. Yeah, let's call it billions because we're, we're at Google. Um, and so you have Africans who can relate with a lot of what you're saying, and you have allies who also want to be able to help. Uh, what three lessons? If you, I know there's a lot of advice you can give, but if you were to say the three things what would those three things be to Africans and to allies? Uh, what, what would those pieces of advice be? If you're still studying, find a mentor. I think mentor has very important that can help you for your journey. If you're working already, you can donate your time for a foundation with your skills. <coughs> or you can mentor a student. Or you can donate, sponsor a girl, sponsor, help us sponsor the IT program, or go to volunteer on the ground and uh, with your skills, your time, your competences, or you can run a marathon or give your birthday to Malaika uh, or any other foundation that you feel. You know, it's very important always to donate to a foundation that is important to your heart. Is it cancer? Is it, uh, is it education? Is it sport? Uh, is it mental health? I never push people just to donate because it's me. I want people to feel the mission. And um, and I think too, before be able to give back, it's very important you are good in your own skin and you stand on your two feet too. Because, because if not, you can break. And sometimes it's very important you take your own time. I have to close a lot of things around me sometimes and just be alone with me or just be alone with my kids and my husband to resource myself and to be able to to confront the world because you know you speak uh, to conference you are on the ground with a lot of people there's issues that you have to challenge there's issues you have to solve so you, you need to be very very uh, very calm with yourself and it's important to take your time go to do a spa go to run do gymnastic or read a book or just listen to music switch off Thank you so much. That is really priceless advice. And and you actually talked to something I was going to ask you, which is how do you take time off to just refocus? And I think that advice of taking care of your well-being, finding a way to have your own time so that you can reflect and get energized to go back to the mission, that's really, really good advice. There's a few questions coming on the chat, but before we get to that, um, <laughs> Google's mission is to organize the world's information and make it accessible and useful to all. So with that in mind, what can Google and what can Africans at Google do to make that a reality for you and for Malaika? When people Google education, Africa, we put Malaika as the first. <laughs> <laughs> On Google search, donate, yes, go Malaika, that would be cool. <laughs> I like that, I like that, that's, that's, that's fantastic. So everyone who's listening live, you know, make sure you continue to put Malaika so we can. We put Malaika on the top, 
And uh, yes, you can. I'm, I'm really excited, you know, to hear your thought, to hear the question that the audience has. And uh, to greet some of you in the Congo would be, would be amazing. And I would love to visit Google in Africa too and see ways we could partner. That would be okay. really, really great. But we have entrepreneurs, we have students, we have a lot of programs. I think it'd be amazing. So that's something okay. we, can, we can work on. I believe in yes. long-term relationship, in strategies, how we can be a long-term partnership and how we can have some of the students to come to work for Google. That would be my dream. All right, all right. So everyone heard that. So they, there's a number of things that Google can do for Noella and for Malaika. So really appreciate that. You know, I'm, I'm ambitious. So let's make happen at least a few things, guys. Okay, let's make it happen. You, you're right next to the Google office in Zurich. There's a Google office in New York. There's a Google office in Nairobi. So um, we can make some of that possible. Uh, let me look at a couple of questions that have come yes. up. And I want to tell something. You know, Malaika, um, to run all the programs of Malaika, it costs nearly $600,000 a year. So um, our fundraising is really, is really important. Thank you. Actually, one of the first questions is from Dalanda Ba. And the question is how you funded grants, donations. So uh, tell us a little bit about how you're funded. <coughs> so we funded mainly um, uh, through grants, uh, grant application. Uh, so um, the foundation is based in America and in Congo. So we are funded by grant, uh, grant application. We have corporate, we have organization, we have L'Oreal Fund, we have Caterpillar Foundation, we have DHL. We have quite good names, but all of these names came because after 15 years, we have, credibil we have a lot of credibility. We're very transparent in our finance. We have a strong structure. And uh, we have individuals that sponsor girls a year, help us to sponsor the meals program, help us to sponsor a well, uh, put uh, money to pay the teachers of IT. Some people donated uh, tablets, computers. So we have different ways where we raise money. People run a marathon, a birthday. I do every year. I donate my birthday, virtual birthday. I hope all of you can join. It's early December. I will send you an invitation. And for my birthday, we raise between only thirty to $60,000. So there's different ways where we fundraise. But it's not easy. It's been challenging, you know, with the, with the COVID, Ukraine, Afghanistan, and everything. It, it's tough. Yeah, I, you know, when you talked about Ukraine and sort of the impact that had that has on something as far away as Malaika in Congo, that's really, that was really interesting to hear that something that's happening on one side of the world can actually impact something that's happening on a different part of the world. So thank you for raising that awareness. Um, there's another question here. Um, I think it goes to these NGOs, these charities. There's a lot of people like you running a lot of uh, charity organizations. What more can we continue to do? Because when you think about the African continent and a lot of the work that we need to do in the African continent, what else can we do in addition to Malaika and other NGOs and, and charity <laughs> organizations? Is really give the skills to the next uh, generation, I think. We need to build them with skills, with entrepreneurship spirit. And as individuals, we can, we can change. We can really change a lot of things in Africa. But we have to work as, a, as unity. It's very, very, very important. Give skills to the next generation, continue to stay united. That's very, very important. And not only education, you know, you look for a plumber, you look for a mechanician, you look for a great builder. Sometimes they don't, they're not there. So you cannot only create intellectual via university. You need to give, to create a middle class, you need to give them skills, employability. You need to give access to everyone because a lot of children drop school around 13, 14 years old because the family didn't have money. But it's how you help this, this generation to be able to earn their own money and being independent too. I really like that model because it, and I think you said it also earlier, you said you want to remove yourself from a like as such that it can exist and go on without you, right? So that's also a responsibility we have for the younger generation of Africans is to empower them and build those skills so that even if we're not there, that they're able to sustain those skills, right? I think that's what I'm exactly. hearing you say. Okay. 
Um, you've given us so much wonderful advice. I could go on forever, but we're about to wrap up. So I'm going to ask you a couple of questions. Uh, they were not in the script, so I hope that, uh, that these will be OK. One is, since you're here at Google, is there a Google product you love so much and cannot live without? But I use everyday Google. When I have to research someone, when I have to go somewhere, Google Map. <laughs> <laughs> Google Map, when I have to go to speak to a panel, I research every single person they have on my panel. I look at their names. And sometimes I Google my name too. What's going on with Noela? Oh, what's going on in my life? <laughs> That's fantastic. That is so fantastic. But Google Maps okay. is important because I'm always on the go. I travel a lot. I go to a lot of places and I've been lost with the Google Maps. <laughs> fantastic. Coffee or tea? Which one do you oh, prefer? Oh, I'm tea. I live in England. English breakfast tea with milk and I'm bad. One sugar. Sorry about that. But sometimes milk. honey. <laughs> milk and, and have a nice, nice teacup. Uh, Can you send me the... a teacup, Google, please? Maybe we'll, we'll see if we can do that. Uh, <laughs> let's see, beach, mountain, or city? Which Where do you feel the most comfortable? Ooh, that's complicated. I love the beach because that's where um, I, on wind, where I relax, where I got back my resource. I just love to hear the wave, the noise, and falling asleep with the beach sound and being on the sun and see my kids swimming all day and building castle and all of that. And that's really good. But I'm a person that loves to work and very busy. So after two weeks of beach, I need to go back into cities. I live in a place where it's really cool. It's a town uh, with my kids. But I live many years in London and New York. So I'm a, I'm a city person and the other side of the countryside because with my kids, I like to be away of all the city things and give them the countryside and we have a dog. <coughs> so it's kind of both. Okay. Thank you, Noella. Thank you for everything you do for Malaika. Thank you for everything you do for the continent of Africa beyond Congo. We appreciate it so much. Thank you for joining us at Google and everyone who's listening, please. You heard Noella's call to action. One, donate as much as you can, if you can. Let's go empower Africa, empower the next generation with the skills that they need to sustain this. And when the blueprint is ready, Noella, let us know. We will download and we will do the same thing for all the charity organizations that we can to support Africans. Really, really appreciate it. And if some of you want to, um, some tech want to mentor a student and do a tech classes too, they are welcome. And I would love to go to see your Google headquarters uh, in America too. That would be really, really good. Absolutely. I think, um, you know, I'll say this in public, I do think that's something that we can do when we think about connecting from where we are to anywhere in, the, in, in Africa, being able to connect and do this sort of video chat with the students and to be able to build skills that way. I think that's a really, really great call to action for some of us. Thank you very much. And visit our website, our social media, spread the word. You know, sometimes you don't have to donate, but spread the word. It's good too. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Noella. Thank you. Take care, everyone, and thank you for coming. Okay. And see you in, in Congo. You have to come to Kamalaika. Okay, sure. Yes, we will do. Thank you. Okay, bye. Thank you.